Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of The Real Israel Podcast with me, your host, Chaim Mailspin. Join us as we dive into Israel's past, present, and future as we explore the rich history, current events, and visionary perspectives shaping this dynamic region. Welcome to another episode of The Real Israel Podcast. I am here with Tinka from the Netherlands. These are very hard times, times of war. I, I think it's the hardest times Israel has been through in since the Yom Kippur War. 50 years ago to the day was since the Yom Kippur War, to October 7th massacre. Uh, and I just, you know, as a soldier in the army, uh, still defending the defenseless, here and there I get these little breaks and I always want to, you know, give you guys the lay of the land. And Tinka, it is a pleasure to have you uh, on the Real Israel Podcast with your host, Chaim Mailspin. That's me. Mm. So um, why don't you, we'll start out with introducing her a little bit more. Uh, Tinka is, uh, if, if I do, am allowed to introduce you, is she lives in the Netherlands. She runs the entire Alia Return Center Netherlands office. Um, and it's, it's registered with the government. She even works with the government. Uh, her and her family are there. And they actually, we met, how did we even first meet? I don't even remember how we first met. It was years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago when I was here on a holiday in the Galilee okay. to visit the biblical places. Right. And then we met because we brought a suitcase with toys. Right. To give away to, to, give away the, to the immigrants. immigrants. Yes. That's right. And since then, it just it seemed like God has opened up so many doors. Who would have guessed that we would have an office registered, the Ali Return Center in the Netherlands, uh, and people sending shipping containers of uh, 40 foot shipping containers of goods. It's not just a little bag of toys anymore. Now it's containers coming through people um, giving of their hard earned uh, money to bless the new immigrants and even uh, have a place of prayer and, and really raising goodwill ambassadors. So she invited, the, the office invited me uh, to go and speak there. And I remember it was my first time ever, ever in the Netherlands and nether doesn't mean far, it means uh, the lowlands, lowlands, very flat land, uh, very nice people. I, what I call them is genuine people, just genuine, good-hearted, hardworking, no nonsense, just uh, the real believers. <laughs> they're, they're really cool people. And I got, I got to go around to places like Hochvin. Uh I found out that actually, I'm not going to go on too long about this, but that... You know, they were the first ones who, you know, fa established America in many ways. Even the flag of America is based in some way. The colors of the Holland, of the, of the and actually Holland and Netherlands is not the exact same thing. But uh, the, the Dutch flag and even the very constitution was based off of the, the con like kind of what the Dutch people told the British. Um, and even Har I went to Harlem. I spoke in Harlem, which is the original Harlem, not the Harlem in America. Uh, many things are, are similar and they have a great heart to help and take care of Israel. And that brings me right to this person here, uh, to love Israel. In these times of war, it's hard to love Israel. If you could get a Palestinian flag in your face, uh, it can be dangerous to stand with Israel. So let me ask you this first question is, how did you as a believer in God, believer in the Bible, come from the Netherlands to uh, have a heart for not only for Israel, but for even the restoration of the House of David, the 12 tribes returning Aliyah, Zionism, community. Well, I was raised in a church, uh, but in a church, we never spoke about Israel. And um, although I, I always knew that God existed and mm -hmm. his son, Yeshua, Jesus, died for me on the cross. Still, I was 18 and a Jewish lady explained the gospel to me. Mm. And she explained to me that you actually can receive Yeshua and be born again. A Jewish lady, okay. A Jewish oh. lady. Interesting. So at my uh, 18, I was born again when I received Yeshua. And instantly I had a deep love for Israel. And we got Bible studies, uh, in which uh, they spoke about God's plan mm -hmm. with Israel, so it fed my love for Israel. So that's how it started, my love for Israel. 
but then two years ago um, when we met and I was that your first trip to Israel you said or no it was um, no I went ten years earlier with the group okay yeah so my second time yeah. but it was uh, yeah then the, the description the prophecies about the return and mm -hmm. restoration of Israel mm -hmm. really touched my heart and, uh, and and the work that's been done here also mm -hmm. So. I do find that it's true that people who come on a trip, the first trip is, is saying, is it heaven on earth? Is It's not heaven on earth. <laughs> there's issues, there's problems here, like, like you have in any country. And you have to pay taxes, just like in any country, and, and so on. But have to serve and defend the defenseless sometimes, just like in any country. Uh, but what I've noticed is people that want to get go deeper, connect with the Aliyah Return Center, they connect with... Uh, First trip is like to see the sites where things happened 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago or with Abraham's Gate 4,000 years ago. It's hard for people to even imagine that in some of these New York, new Amsterdam, new, you know, all, of, all the different things new. But uh, then, they, then they connect with the deeper meaning and they connect with this, with us. And they want to know the real Israel. Yeah. And combined with this, what also happened is that I joined the Elder of Prayer. Online okay. prayer, what's, what's that? Oh, online online prayer. prayer for Israel, twenty four seven. People from all over the world join together in prayer online, and um, that really uh, taught me a lot about mm -hmm. how to pray for Israel, God's plan with Israel, His prophecies, and um, it really taught me to pray, how to pray, what to pray, to pray from Scripture, and um, because before I was praying for the peace of Jerusalem, but to protect Israel and mm -hmm. I'll pray for the peace of Jerusalem but that's it I didn't know much more how to pray but uh, I'm just gonna be kind of interesting here um didn't the church just like replace Israel though because Israel was around King David King Solomon and didn't then they're gone and now the church is the only thing that matters and Israel's gone right no mm -hmm. isn't that yeah unfortunately still some churches believe this or people oh. from certain churches and sometimes even they're not aware of, of this replacement theology mm -hmm. um, because it's rooted really deep because it's been taught for centuries in Europe uh -huh. and, and Europe, even, right and even the, the Christians who, who don't believe that the church replaced Israel still have some roots of replacement theology without realizing it as in still thinking but the Jews didn't accept Yeshua mm -hmm. well if the Jews didn't accept Yeshua then how do we get our Bible including the New Testament we got it from the Jews yeah how did the gospel did, yeah. how did the gospel go all over the world yeah. because the Jews went out to preach yeah. the gospel I think people just don't know that within Judaism within Israel there were and are various streams uh, like the Karaites there's the Pharisees, Sadducees, there's those who follow Schneerson, there's those who are Messianics, there are those who were the, uh, the Sicari rebels, the, the Galilean zealots, the Essene community. There's some that say, no, the barley, you have to pick the barley when the ears are full. We have to have a complete dark sky before we count the new moon. Others say, no, it has to be a full moon. There's different approaches, but people make generalizations like, Ah, it's all, you know, it's all one thing. Yeah. But now we live in a time when we see God's hand in Israel. Mm -hmm. Like in 1948, we saw the miraculous birth of Israel mm -hmm. as a nation. And it was a wake-up call for the church. And these days, this war, again, is a wake-up call for the church. Mm -hmm. What do you believe? Do you really believe the full scripture? Do you believe that God is the God of Israel? That he's faithful, that his covenants, that he keeps his covenants. Yeah. Or do you believe your own theology and only what fits your yeah. theology? One of the things that I that I wanted to say is that the eschatology of one's mind I found shapes how that how you live today. Like if people close their eyes and they say, "Think of heaven. You want to go to heaven, right?" So think of heaven, and people think of a white. Everything's just white, and maybe an angel with with wings flies over and some pearly gates uh, with whatever 
are they thinking of that or are they thinking of the new Jerusalem with these very tribes on every gate? Every gate is written in Hebrew. Yehuda, tribe of Judah, Dan. Well, maybe not Dan, but uh, Levi, you know, the different ones that are in, over the gates. It's found in, in the vision of Yohanan, the Galilean man, who was on this island of Patmos and he saw this stuff. And also there's the Galileans on the um, foundation stone of each gate under on the gate has a name, you know, um, all the different Galileans, Andrew, Peter, Tom, or their Hebrew names, of course, Kepha, um, Yohanan, and so. Yeah, so this is actually part of the replacement theology that people are not always aware of, that they still believe in parts of it. When we read about the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. many Christians immediately think about a heavenly kingdom. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua is in heaven right now, mm -hmm. but where is he? coming back to, to the earth. Mm -hmm. He will mm -hmm. be king here on the earth and reign from Jerusalem yeah. here on earth. So the kingdom of God is not just a heavenly kingdom, yeah. it's the earthly kingdom also. I don't know if you know, but some of the rabbis, orthodox rabbis, don't believe in Yeshua, but they have a differentiation between people like you, believers, or they call it what, the hard Christians, the believers, the real, or they say, the, uh, the rest. And there was even a, a meeting of some chief rabbis. They wanted to meet, uh, oh, they were going to meet a Presbyterian or a Anglican church leaders. And they said, no, 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 no. We don't have time for that. It's a war now. We want to meet the, the, the real believers, meaning people like you. They wanted to meet people like you more than the big, uh, fancy Christians. So aren't you afraid? It's a time of war. Aren't you afraid to be, I get you believe the Bible, that's cool, but aren't you afraid of like missiles? I mean, I don't know if you know, but there's a giant threat of Turkey invading Israel, Iran bombing with everything, more than last time, more, <laughs> UAVs, uh, not the scary, but cruise missiles, ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles that can level cities. Uh, okay. Then you have, of course, the Hezbollah terror group with 1,500 martyrs, they're ready to go and, and commit suicide, they're a suicide unit to invade the Galilee. And then of course they have 1,500, 1,000, sorry, 150,000 very precise missiles with a guided system that can hit right to a window and they, so that's also, and then of course you have the, the guys in Iraq, the Badr force and Hamas. Uh, yeah. So, is that worrisome to you? <laughs> well, when I, when I accepted Yeshua as my Savior, I also accept, accepted Him as my Lord, which means that I gave my life to Him, which means that I want to mm -hmm. do the works that He prepared for me and walk in them, like mm -hmm. in Ephesians. And for me, it means that I'm in Israel right now, and my life's no longer mine, it's Yeshua's. So I'll go where He sends me. And that's in Israel right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe for every believer mm -hmm. that um, God has such a deep heart for Israel. Right. And my favorite scripture that's is... That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Any scripture that <laughs> you really... Uh, scripture is uh, Je Jeremiah 32, verse 41. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read it. Yeah. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will surely plan them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. If God is doing something with, with all his heart and all his soul, and actually it's the only time in the whole scripture that mm -hmm. he says he does something with mm -hmm. all his heart and all his soul. Mm -hmm. I love that one. And you love, you love this God, then don't you love what he loves? Mm -hmm. And you want to participate in this. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean everyone has to come to the Netherlands. I had to right now, and others maybe also mm. another point but well, come to the Galilee you, you mean, uh, yeah. come to the Galilee right. or Jerusalem or somewhere mm -hmm. in Israel but it does mean if you love the Lord then you mm -hmm. participate in some way with prayers for Israel maybe financial support right. with uh, donating clothing furniture whatever God yeah. tells you to do you do it because God loves Israel and you love God so you also love Israel right so you're the chairwoman of a registered charity, uh, ARC Netherlands, Ali Return Center Netherlands. You work with the government uh, in some way. I don't know if that's secret or whatever it is in your, your job. Municipality, your municipality worker. Okay, in Netherlands. And that's in Hoek Hoekhoven? 
Okay. Okay. And you, you, so you have a knowledge of what goes on. There's a lot of parades going on or anti-Israel protests that are going on. I've seen at the Hague, the ICC, uh, International Criminal Court, the ICJ, International Court of Justice, and and it's and so they they really there's a lot of anti-Israel sentiment. Or maybe they don't understand what Israel's about. What what this means that Jewish people are allowed to have a homeland and not die in the Holocaust again. We're supposed to be able to be alive. And or they think maybe that if we love Israel, we hate Arabic people. That's completely not true. It's every street sign here is in Arabic, Hebrew, English. Completely equal citizens in Israel. Other other areas and other territories. There is a lot of violence. A lot of um, anti-Semitism rising. Yeah. Do you feel that you see anti-Semitism in the thing and in the church? Yes, unfortunately, yes. And from the very beginning, when God created Adam and Eve and the the Garden of Eden, the the the, the tactics of the of the devil of Satan was lies mm -hmm. and we see it in this time there are so many lies about Israel and um, about the, the Arabs also and if the Bible says um, if you don't have a strong foundation then you're lost and the, the foundation is knowing God and knowing scripture and that's true for Israel and it's also true for the believers for the church if you don't know God, if you don't know Scripture, then you start believing lies. Mm -hmm. And if you don't bother to, to read your Bible mm -hmm. and ask God what to think, what the truth is, mm -hmm. then you will be deceived and start believing lies. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we see that a lot of people start believing lies because they're being fed lies every day through the media. And unfortunately, also people in the churches many do support Israel in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a lot of local Israel in the church also. But also uh, also believers who, uh, who don't, uh, don't bother to ask God to read their Bible and to mm -hmm. believe the truth about Israel and God's plan mm -hmm. with Israel. My brother learned Romanian. He, he studied Romanian and he can watch the news in, in Romanian if he wants. We're not Romanian, we're Israeli Jewish people, but he, he married a, a Jewish Romanian girl. Anyway, point is, is um, he's watching it. He said, they turn on the news and it just says Palestinian killed by Israel, another Palestinian killed by Israel. Uh, but they don't say, you know, they don't even men, maybe they don't even talk about it. I don't know if it's the same there. Um, 251 hostages were taken by the Nukba, by the Hamas terrorist group, and by even civilians took, uh, and then massacring how many? One, one and a half, 1,500 people or something massacred, killed, and, uh, or how much was it? Yeah, a lot of people massacred, and we are there going to find our hostages, find our brothers and sisters, our fellow tribes people, and bring back bring them back to safety there's even babies you know little toddler uh fear bebus ariel bebus and no they're still not released and that's what we're doing there we're not there to oppress anybody we just in fact vacated left in 2005 the whole entire gaza just giving them jobs and supplying electricity and water and which that's not what egypt wanted to do that's not what anyone wanted to do but we did that i don't know if that is is the are the facts Told, or are they just like I was saying in Romania, just uh, that's another European, not too far away. The regular media does share the facts, unfortunately. Oh. Now there's a lot of lies. Hamas is lying a lot, and the media mm -hmm. takes over a lot of the lies. Even for example, and there are really blunt lies. We know that 12 or maybe 14. Children already, 15 now, 15 so already count, children yeah. died from the Druze village, so sad. Mm -hmm. And one of the pictures of a crying um, young girl was used in an article saying that Israel was killing children. Mm. Well, it was a picture of a Druze girl crying about Israeli her citizen friends, like me, yeah. an Israeli citizen yeah. whose friends were killed by Hezbollah. Right. Another so terror group in the north. Such blunt lies, and the media just 
takes these lives from Hamas and Congress mm -hmm. and the West. It's so, it's a shame. It, uh, and uh, the one thing that got me about this media war is I saw a picture years ago. This is years ago, I fought Hamas years ago. Blew up some tunnels years ago. We didn't finish, we didn't win the war back then, and that's why it continued. But um, what happened is there was a picture of a boy with his, hand, his shirt off and a picture of his hands up, and a bunch of soldiers with guns on this boy. And it says, they won't just let them play soccer, will they? The Israelis are so oppressive, so evil. And I'm a soldier, so I know that we love soccer. We don't ever, it's not, we're not there stopping you. But I look at the picture and I see it says, these Jewish pigs are so evil. I have to figure out what this picture is about. You just do a little checking, you found out what happened. This picture wasn't oppressing a Palestinian boy. What it was is he was uh, rigged back in the Antifada times. He was rigged with a, they put the evil parents and whatever, his handlers, put a bomb on him to blow himself up and say, go to the checkpoint where the soldiers are, go and we check people for bombs. So he walked up to blow himself up, they put drugs in his system, and the poor boy, eventually it took a long time for him to get there or whatever, the drugs started to wear off, and, and then he says, I wanna live, help me, help me soldiers, bring your robot and, 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 and take your shirt off, we're gonna get the bomb off you. And the robot came and took the bomb off so it doesn't blow up on us, Stay that. Stay back, though. You know we'll rescue you. We're gonna take you uh, and rescue you from these evil people. That's what happened. We saved this boy's life here. But the media says something completely different. Uh, like you said, a blunt lie. At that moment, I said, "Man, I gotta really look at things that look one way." I have. I know the truth about Israel, so I, I know that that doesn't make any sense. So I have to check into it. Yeah. I want to ask you this really quick. Is uh, I heard that you're not just running a charity in in Netherlands, you actually also go right into the midst of, like say the Hague in Amsterdam, or the Hague, is that how you say it? Den Haag. Den Haag. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, prayer is so important. So, uh, Jack van der Tang, who's from the Netherlands, organized yes. this the trial, and um, a lot of people, almost thousands of people came there together pray together to repent for their own nation mm. and not being supportive of Israel and um, uh, do I understand correctly that they wanted to vote and say that all the old city of Jerusalem where King David lived and King Solomon and etc that, that is all supposed to be a capital of a Palestinian state that's called the whole old city is essentially they calling it East Jerusalem there isn't any East and West and North and South Jerusalem it's just Jerusalem okay but they're trying to divide it and say no, that should be designated as the capital of a, a new nation called, Palis called Palestine. Everything was called Palestine. We were called Palestinians. Yeah. Jews were called Palestinians. Our Jerusalem Post was called the Palestine Post that Jewish people were writing. But, okay, so you're saying that they were saying that and other things. Exactly, yes. So you prayed so, against it. And we prayed against it and repented on behalf of our nations and um, proclaimed the truth that the land is God's land. Mm -hmm. And we as humans have no right whatsoever to divide this land, to get to choose who gets to live where, because God said, I give it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their offspring. It's mm -hmm. God's land, it's his choice who right. gets to live there. Right. And um, so yes, that's what we proclaimed, mm -hmm. and that's what the, the decree said. And the decree was brought by Jack von der Tang to the Great judges. Yeah. And uh, it was a serious warning for the judges. I read oh, it. God. I signed it. Yes. Um, be aware of what you're doing because this is God's land that you're interfering with. Mm. So, and, and I really believe that this is a time for people to, to wake up, to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And it's a time of warnings. God is showing that it's still Israel is his land, his mm -hmm. people, and he will never let it be destroyed because he made promises and he mm -hmm. keeps them. I think people don't even realize that the Palestinians were offered a state five times by prime ministers of Israel and five different times. And well, you could even say six times with Gaza being uh, offered. This is for you to enjoy. It's beachfront property. The houses are so nice. I've been in there all throughout Gaza looking for the hostages. And uh, but they didn't want to just enjoy the land. They wanted to use that as a place to build tunnels, to attack, attack tunnels, uh, missile production, 
bombs. Uh, and so do people even know that they were offered five times a Palestinian state? Here, please have a Palestinian state. And they didn't, they said no. I mean. Yeah, some people do other things also about these uh, facts are a lot of lies. Oh. But I think the most important is that we all should recognize that there is no human uh, solution for this problem. Right. We as humans, we can mm -hmm. divide up the land, try to make a reasonable agreement. That's, that's not the solution. The only solution is align with God's plan. That's right. And as long as we don't, and we don't, right. we see what's happening in this world. <clears throat> yeah. As long as we don't, um, it will only get worse because God can only give a blessing if we align with his plan. I do know, and we'll have to wrap up pretty soon, but I know that there's universities is like a battleground, academia, changing even historical things. There seems like there's a battleground in even the church, just, you know, teaching in things that are not accurate biblically, not giving the, the picture the Bible says, uh, and in politics, in the military, of course, in economy, boycott, let's boycott Israel product, let's boycott, uh, and then, of course, in the academia, I've seen the battleground. Have you seen, like in America, they have protests, and, and, and you're saying, what? why are you saying from the river to the sea, no Jews should be here anywhere, and the whole, that's the whole country. From the river, if you're talking the Jordan River, people don't even know what they're talking about, but the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, that's, we're bordered on one side by the Jordan River, and the other side by the Mediterranean Sea, so no Israel. Like, where, is that the same in Netherlands? On a, not, yes, but on a smaller scale. Okay. On a smaller scale, and um, yeah, so there's a lot of deceit also among the academics and in universities. But actually, uh, mm -hmm. a brother just shared with me that he um, is a teacher in one of the universities, and he he just went to the encampment of the pro-Palestinians every day or a couple of times a week and proclaimed God's word. Wow! And after a couple of weeks, the encampment uh, disappeared, and so this is. Yeah, it's wow. so important to proclaim God's truth, to pray for Israel. Wow. And that's what, what we did in the trial in The Hague. That's what we're doing at the altar of prayer on the online platform. Mm -hmm. I like that's what, what you, every church should do. Should, I like what you said about um, making a choice. People can now see the French Olympics where you could see here is one very uh, liberalist, uh, anti-faith, anti... Well, that was a Passover dinner that was being showcased that some yeah. call it the Last Supper. Passover, Judeo-Christian, that's how the Judeo-Christian New Covenant came about, was in that dinner, and it was being uh, really desecrated. And so people are doing that, or aligning themselves with a jihadist, you know, neo-Nazi apocalyptic, uh, you know, it's the anarchists. It seems like they want, the anarchists want to do anarchy to destroy Western uh, values, Western civilization, the family as a, as a value. I know there's, I'm not going to mention these organizations in America, that their stated values, we don't believe there should be a nuclear family anymore. We don't believe in any of that. So you said make a choice so people could choose that, or the Judeo-Christian values, which founded, I noticed, isn't it true you have a cross on your flag? Uh, no, not on the Netherlands flag, but on the other flags, not the Netherlands flag, but there's Finnish flag, Swedish flag, uh, Danish flag, but not the Dutch flag. But, but it's still based on the Judeo-Christian values found in the Hebrew Bible. True, true. Yes, and the choice is do we, um, do we rebel against God because we think we have a better plan? Mm -hmm. Even if it looks similar maybe like us, but maybe you do like families and but still not like Israel, Mm -hmm. We still not fully submit to God's plan. So that's a choice. And we live in a dark time, mm -hmm. and I believe it's only getting darker. And the choice will be mm. sharper. You have to choose. Do I align with God, or do I choose my yeah. own path and be rebellious against God? Yeah. Which includes, how do you, how do you perceive Israel? True. One of, uh, as we end, uh, I want to see if you want to maybe tell uh, those people who are watching uh, a message that they can hold in their hearts in these dark times and, and encourage them. But when I was there in Corrie ten Boom's house, Corrie ten Boom's a famous Dutch uh, lady, 
76 years ago or so, you know, 77 years ago, she was in a time of war and there were soldiers everywhere that were called Nazis and they wanted to just kill and destroy. It's like a spiritual thing. Uh, I just talked to a rabbi last night, in the, uh, to an Orthodox man. He said, it is strange that like in Persia, ancient Persia, a few thousand years ago, they could have done whatever they want. They were very wealthy. They could have uh, lived a life, make business, make money, but they focused, you know, at one point, the man in Haman, fo prime minister, focused all his energy on one mission to destroy all the Jewish people and kill them all. All of them. Which is a kind of strange thing. Like, why don't instead, don't you want to do something else with your time and your resources? But that was the focus. It's almost like a, it, it makes them dumb because do something else. Get Why don't you get a yacht, Haman? Get a yacht. Go on a yacht for a while, you know? He doesn't want to go on a yacht. He's <laughs> but then there was another another person called Cyrus who chose to stand with uh, the, the Aliyah and the Zionism, essentially, that the Jewish people can come to their homeland and, and so this is what King Cyrus did. So today, there's a choice to be made yet again, and Corrie ten Boom made that choice. She, at the risk of her own life, her own sister, was killed in a concentration camp. Uh, do you have a message? I look at you as a modern-day Corrie ten Boom. I hope you won't have to hide Jewish people in, in your basement in the Netherlands. I hope you won't have to do that. No. <laughs> but you never know. Do you have a message for the people here, the Corrie ten Booms out there? I really invest in your relationship with Yeshua because the times will only get harder. It will be more confusing. There will be even more lies and deceit. And if you don't know Yeshua and the God of Israel, who Yeshua, the, the King of the Jews, who will return in Jerusalem, then it will become really hard to keep standing. Um, and the pressure will also increase. increase. So keep your eyes, eyes fixed on Yeshua. Time to read your Bible, to invest in your relationship with Him, and understanding His Word, understanding, knowing His voice, like it said in I think Luke or John, the shepherds know the the voice that the sheep know, recognize yeah. the voice of their shepherd. So right. listen to God's voice every day, so that you recognize the truth of His voice or the lies of the world mm -hmm. and the devil, so that you can stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you for standing strong and for joining the uh, Real Israel podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this. We want to hear what you think about these things and share it to at least 10 friends. God bless you, and we'll see you every Sunday for another episode of the Real Israel podcast. I'm your host, Chaim Mielsman. God bless you. If you enjoyed today's episode, well, go ahead and click like, comment. We want to hear from you. Subscribe. Click that notification bell in order to be updated and stay updated. And please help us share the truth. Share this with your friends on social media. Share it everywhere you go. And you know what? We survive and are able to bring you this exclusive content only through donations. So thank you for your generosity.